Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about black face fender amps. They're my favorite kind. And even though it's cold outside, it's a perfect day for building amps inside. We're getting a little bit of warmth here, a little bit of snow melts mid-winter, but I'm sure it's not going to last forever. There's going to be plenty other cold and snowy nights to take a look at tube amps. Today I want to discuss black face fender amps pulling out the V1 preamp tube. Is this a myth, a fact, or a fiction? Let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is what is actually happening from an electrical perspective. I'm going to try to explain this like I'm five. Uh, so for those of you that aren't amp techs or are really knowledgeable about that, I hope that I can try to convey to you what this information means. Because again, the theme of this mod is that it's not something that requires a huge amount of tech expertise and something that anybody can try. So first of all, just want to address that it's safe. There's really no disadvantage to pulling out the V1 tube. All it does is it means you can't use the normal input. The tube drives that input, and if the tube is not there, it will simply short uh, those connections, and, and there will be no way for the auto signal to pass through. So only the vibrato channel will work, and then the tone of the vibrato channel should hopefully be changed somewhat by doing this mod. But you're certainly free to experiment with it, try it yourself. It, there's really no risk or no harm in testing it out or not. Next, if you are looking at the back of your amp, you're trying to figure out what's going on, uh, a Blackface Deluxe Reverb style amp has five preamp tubes and they um, those are those short little 12AX7s or 12AT7s or 12AU7s that are in the preamp and then it's got two of the taller power amp tubes, the 6V6s or if it's a super reverb it might have 6L6s, a twin reverb will have four 6L6s and then it might have a tube rectifier on the very end. Now um, with this mod you want to count the tubes from the input side, which is where the smallest ones are going to be, and then as you move towards the power amp side, you increase your count. So V1, vacuum tube 1, is the one we're talking about. Vacuum tube 2, that governs the preamp signal for the vibrato channel. Vacuum tube 3 covers the reverb driving circuit to drive the signal out to the reverb tank and then recover it when it comes back. V4's duties are split. Half of it goes to drive a gain stage on the vibrato channel. And if you've ever thought why the normal channel sounds cleaner, maybe a little bit weaker, thinner, anemic, and the vibrato channel sounds fatter, higher gain, that's because it has this extra gain stage. So the vibrato channel technically has three gain stages on the audio signal, whereas the normal channel only has two. The other half of that V4 tube covers the tremolo recovery stage. The V5 tube helps to drive the tremolo oscillator and give you some gain to drive that uh, signal. And then V6 is dedicated to the long tail pair phase inverter. It's recommended, sometimes it's recommended that you pull both V1 for the normal channel tube and also the V4 tube, which is your tremolo tube. If you're not using the tremolo very often, you can pull them both and it kind of has a similar function at least to some extent. So those are the tubes. If you're looking at the back of your amp, start with the smallest ones and count upwards from there. So now let's talk about why this mod does what it does. Well, first of all, I think there's one thing that's kind of quirky and then one thing that would apply to basically any tube circuit ever. The quirky thing is that with the V1 tube, the V1 tube is biased by a cathode bias resistor. And the value of that resistor helps to determine how that tube is biased. So if you want to think about the idle of a car, when you turn your car on and it's just sitting there idling, it might be between like 500 and 1000 RPMs and it's just kind of sitting at that level. Uh, that's kind of the same thing as a bias. It needs to be set at a proper idle level so that when the audio signal comes in, it doesn't have to start up from zero, but it's also not too hot that it's overworking the, the, the tube and the transformers, and it's just kind of ready to go at a proper level. It also helps govern the amplification, right? How much, when you, when you put a signal into that tube and it amplifies it coming out, how Aggressively, does it amplify that signal? Does it amplify it equally both on the positive and negative swings of the AC waveform? It's just a pretty critical resistor to help set how that tube functions. The quirky part is that the resistor that governs V1 
is also used elsewhere, so it kind of has a double duty. That resistor is used both to govern the cathodes of that V1 tube as well as one of the typically one of the reverb stages. And this is kind of a quirky behavior because when that resistor shares, it has to do double duty, it basically does that work half as efficiently. And so the tube actually gets biased. It, let's say it's a, a 1.5K resistor. Each of those tubes, because it's doing double duty, is getting about 820 ohms of functional resistance as far as how the bias is set. And so really what happens when you pull the V1 tube out, there is no longer that load placed on that resistor. And so elsewhere in the amp, it's able to uh, swing and function freely as if it were the full 1.5K. It doesn't have to do half the duty splitting the time kind of in, it, in its efficiency between both tubes. You pull the one, pull the V1 reverb, you pull the V1 tube out and it lets you use all of the efficiency of the value of that resistor to dedicate to the vibrato channel audio signal. Now, cathode bias resistors can vary a little bit from amp to amp. You hear maybe things about warm bias and cold bias. All of that could potentially apply here to this one gain stage. I would tell you guys, I have done some testing in the past where I have was working with uh, an old uh, Tweed uh, Champ style amp. Uh, I think it was actually a Tweed Princeton, 5F2A Princeton. And I experimented with cathode bias resistors all the way from about 820 ohms up to about 10K. And there certainly is difference there in how those, you know, it changes how that waveform gets amplified. But in my opinion, it is kind of a subtle distinction. And it also really is something you hear more, especially as you push the tube into overdrive. With a clean signal, it's harder to hear. But with a distorted signal, you know, certainly going up to about a 10K, you know, that's a cold clipper that you might hear in a Marshall or a Soldano style amp that's pretty critical to how the distortion of that amp is tuned. So it certainly can make a dis difference in how, uh, especially as you turn that amp, amp up so that it starts clipping, it's gonna really function differently. All that being said, it may not be something that you hear that's a strong difference from A to B. It could be fairly subtle depending on how you use the amp. Then the second reason why this works is has to do with power. Every tube amp has a power transformer that supplies voltage to the tubes. And when you have a tube that is using that power transformer to pull voltage, you know, typically with a 12AX7 gain stage, we're talking somewhere in the range of about 275 volts of direct current. So, and it, it usually pulls it at a current rate of about one to two milliamps is a typical pull for a whole 12AX7, which is not a ton of current, but uh, it is something that can be felt. So each tube, when you have five preamp tubes, each of those tubes is gonna be pulling current from the power supply. And by removing one of those tubes from the equation, it basically means that the power supply doesn't have to work as hard because there's one less object pulling from its power source. So the remaining power it has left over can be distributed to those other tubes. And now while the power transformer in most of these Fender amps is adequately powered, it's not under any stress or strain, by removing that load, you actually, allow it to maybe even have a little slightly higher voltage all the way across the entire amp. So V2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, all those remaining tubes might be just a couple volts higher because that first tube is no longer there, no longer sucking voltage down. This was a phenomenon that I saw very, very clearly when I did my first Hammond AO29 conversion from an organ amp to a guitar amp. And what I found there is those old organ amps they maybe had two 6v6s in the power section, but there might have been seven or more preamp tubes that were scattered all throughout the various stages of that amp. Those were very complex amplifiers that had a whole bunch of different, you know, there was a, there was a main audio circuit, there was a reverb driving circuit, there was a, uh, all these other kind of crazy things that were going on inside that amp with a ton of preamp tubes. And so by going from, if that thing amp is expecting a total of like nine or 10 or 11 tubes and I'm going down to like five, that really is gonna change how that amp is producing voltage. And I found actually that to power 6v6s, I had more voltage than I would have been appropriate. And so I actually had to find a way to burn off some of that excess voltage to make that amp work properly. So I think that same principle applies here. By pulling out one of the tubes, you actually increase the voltage to the rest of the amp. And that is probably, in my opinion, just as much if not more impactful than that change to that resistance of the cathode bias resistor. 
you know, changing the amount of voltage in the amp is kind of a critical uh, thing that can determine how the amp functions and sounds. To give you an example, one of the main differences between the 5E3 Tweed Deluxe and its Blackface and then Silverface Deluxe Brethren is the way and the amount of voltage that is being driven to the plates. The Tweed Deluxe has a large resistor in the B plus step down circuit. So the voltage going to that plate maybe was like 175 or 200 or 225 volts DC. Whereas a black face or silver face fender, that voltage is a lot higher. And so that's a primary reason amongst others as to why the Tweed amp distorts earlier, has lower headroom, is gainier. Well, part of that is because it has lower plate voltage. Whereas the silver face amp, the black face amp has higher plate voltage, so it has potential for cleaner output, it's not going to distort as quickly, potential for higher headroom. To give you an analogy, hopefully to make that clearer, think about when you're driving in your car and you turn the air conditioner on in your car, maybe you set it to full blast, and let's say you're the only one driving in the car and you're really hot, you want to cool down quickly. One of the best things that you could do would be to shut the vents over on the passenger side so that only maybe those two vents on the driver's side are the ones that are active, the other vents are closed. What you'll have experience is there's a higher air output that's being driven on you because the air is not spread across all those different outputs. It makes it a lot more efficient for the two that it is trying to use. On a much smaller or less impactful level, that's what's happening in your amp. By pulling out the V1 tube, you increase voltage on the other tubes. So what I want to do next is take a brief look at the schematic. I want to show you the resistors and, and talk about exactly where those are being highlighted. Then I want to pull out my super reverb. I do have the cathodes that are tied together, so I will experience that, but um, I also want to show you how it sounds when you pull the tube out to reduce voltage. Now, in my Super Reverb, I don't have the, the traditional wiring in place. I've been monkeying around with this high gain mod, but it shouldn't really affect things on the vibrato channel. You should be able to hear if there is a change in the vibrato channel, both with the V1 tube in and out, because for the purpose of the two reasons that I listed before, it would function exactly the same. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how this functions. All right, before you see part of the preamp from an AB763 Fender Super Reverb schematic, I want to focus on the resistor values that I mentioned before. If you look here at the top, you got the normal channel, and then right underneath it, you got the vibrato channel. So the V1 tube is going to be this semicircle here is half of it, and then the second half is this one. So whenever you pull the tube out, basically this part of the circuit goes completely dead. Now what I want to focus on, the signal comes in, the, let's do the vibrato channel, it comes in this first, in the input jack, in this first gain stage, through the tone stack, through the volume, into the second gain stage. Then here at the base of this tube, this is the cathode, you have this 820 ohm resistor and a 25 microfarad bypass cap, and you've got this letter A. Going up to the normal channel, you have the same input, and you also have this letter A. What that means is, the cathode of this tube on the normal channel is connected right here at this point at letter A. So this 820 ohm resistor is biasing both this gain stage here on the normal channel and this gain stage here on the vibrato channel. Because it has to work twice as hard, it is functionally, when you have a tube installed in both, instead of having 820 ohms of resistance, because the current is doubled, Ohm's law will uh, double the resistance value. So it says functionally as if you're seeing 1.64k ohms of resistance when you have the tubes installed. 1.6 is very similar to the 1.5k that you see here and here and many other stages. That's kind of a default value for bias cathode biasing of 12AX7 preamp tube. Well, if you remove this V1 tube, your current is halved, and so this to this resistor can function as normal and you get 820 ohms of resistance on this tube. So you're going to actually be biasing it warmer, 50% warmer than if you were to have this normal channel tube installed. So from a circuit perspective, this 820 ohm resistor, because it's doing double duty, when you pull this V1 tube out of the circuit, it is allowed to function at its true value of 820 ohms changing the bias of this gain stage to be a bit warmer. So that there, now you can see on the circuit how some of those changes play out. What I'm showing you now is a voltmeter that's connected to the amp. I'm actually measuring the plate voltage on the vibrato V1 plate. So it's the first gain stage on the vibrato channel. 
you can see now I just flipped the amp on. It, it went up to 400 some volts and now it's coming back down. This is the plate voltage in the amp. The V1 tube is not in the amp and you can see it's reading 400, 401. So we're getting 400 DC volts on the plate of the vibrato channel V1 preamp tube. So now here's the second clip. The V1 tube has been placed back into circuit, so we'll be drawing current. I just flipped it on. You see it up to about 450. Now that the amp is warming up, it's drawing. You can see we're well, already well below where we were at previously, down to about 306, 303. We're going to level off, I think, at about 300 volts. So you can see that the tube, the presence of the tube on that node is drawing a fair bit more power, and our plate voltage has dropped about 100 volts on the V1 preamp tube. So that's just one spot. The voltage isn't being dropped that heavily across the rest of the amp, but you can see it definitely is making an impact here at this first stage. All right, so now to perform the test, I'm gonna to try to keep it as scientific as possible. What I've done is I've got this Telecaster guitar. I'm playing a riff. I'm gonna run straight into my looping pedal. The looping pedal is gonna run into the vibrato channel. The vibrato channel is set with the volume at about four, treble at about seven, mid at about four, Bass at about three, master's about seven or eight. I'm gonna play the clip with V1 in. That's kind of the normal stock setup. Then I'm gonna power the amp down, let it cool off. We're gonna take the V1 out, turn the amp back on. The loop has been running continuously the whole time. And then I'm gonna record, just continue recording through the, through the whole clip. What you're gonna hear is clip one, clip two, we're going to go back and forth, kind of A-B it a few times, so you can hopefully hear if there is a tonal difference that happens. I'll tell you, subjectively in the room, I don't hear a tremendous difference. It's not something that's super audible, but I do think it's something that is subtle, that if you have a lot of experience with these amps, it could be worth exploring. So let's go ahead and take a listen to the clips. You can draw your conclusions for yourself. <laughs> 